guys for coming to our channel and I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video as we prepare for the upcoming litter that Leah is due to have sometime next week, probably around Friday. So anyways, feel free to subscribe, comment, let us know what else you'd like to see and I hope to keep you along the journey as we travel through this uh, birthing and whelping and raising of the litter and just adventures in general. So thanks again for popping in. you're ready to get ready with me and getting ready for a new litter of puppies. It's so exciting. We have Leah right now who's pregnant and due in about five days, give or take a day. Um, usually they are in gestation for 30, 63 days. What was I going to say? I don't know. Anyways, for 63 days, um, we had her progesterone tested and she mated for three days with a stud named Oli. And those three days, when we count 63 days, it puts her to be due between September 2nd and September 4th. So I'm just taking the middle and saying September 3rd for a due date, but it could be anywhere in that span. Um, so I've just been trying to get ready. I found out a few days ago that my parents have COVID, Leah lives with them, and so normally she would give birth at their house, however, they're sick and it's important that I'm with the puppies when they're born and so I need to be able to access them but I don't want to get sick. Can you blame me? So um, we decided to bring her to our house. Now we just moved in here like four or five months ago. We built and so there's still a lot in progress, a lot that's not finished and one thing that was not ready is the whelping area. So. A lot of the stuff in the move got destroyed or tossed and we figured, oh, let's just do something different later. Well, later came fast. And so here we are and I am trying to get ready. So I've been um, finding stuff that I've used in the past, reordering things that I ran out of and um, getting stuff that I just need in general. So I thought I'd show you what we're gonna use. That way, if you wanna get ready too, or if you're just curious, uh, maybe you're getting a puppy from us, then you can check it out and see what we're up to. So first and foremost is the whelping box. And if you see behind me, this is the whelping box. I have this uh, dog pen around the whelping box so that we can close her in. Um, at night when she sleeps, we definitely want to close her in because the last thing I want is for her to come, uh, I don't know, into my room and have the puppies like on my bed or we just don't know where the puppies are. We just hear something and we go find her, I don't know, behind the couch, who knows. I don't know where she would choose, but what I do know is that I want to know where they are. So if I hear noises, I know exactly where to go to find them. So that's why we have the dog pen around that. Um, right now, Lee is actually over there in the kitchen, but um, I do make sure that she sleeps in there. And then throughout the day, I'll make sure that I put her in there for at least an hour a couple times a day just so that she gets comfortable and she knows this is my spot. Um, like I said, she's used to my parents' house. She's not used to my house. She knows me very well, but um, she doesn't know my house. And so we have the other dogs. The other dogs right now are outside with my husband, Cheze, and our three kids, Comso, Kalo, and Kosi. Um, so they're outside if they come in and make a lot of noise. That's just what happens. But we'll see. I think they'll stay outside and play for a little while. We'll find out. Anyway, my phone just fell down, but I have it back up now. Um, so anyways, as I was saying, the whelping box is really important. What we did is we got a raised garden bed box and we're gonna put pig rails. I still need to go get those. I'll get them tomorrow, um, which is basically just like two inch PVC pipes. 
Um, and then you just get the T post. I'll put a picture probably right here. I don't know, I'm saying that, but we'll see if it works. Uh, anyways, that way you can see what I'm talking about. But it's basically just to go around the bottom um, a couple inches off the ground so that when the mom is laying against the edges or the walls of the whelping box, um, the puppies don't get squished because the puppies definitely like to go crawling around and behind the back is a spot that uh, they can get squished. So, all that to say, the pig rails are important. But I put that back there. Uh, I can put the link in the description box if you're curious. I also, in there right now, have two whelping pads. One is this one. This one is, the, so the whelping box I chose is four feet by four feet, but they have different sizes. Um, anyways, I chose, this is four feet by, I don't know, five and a half feet-ish. I don't really know. But I chose them to a little bit longer just so that I could put the food and water on the outside and it's still on top so that if water splashes, it's soaked up. The biggest thing for me is that it stays nice and dry. So I put this one on the ground first. Uh, and then on top of that, I put a four by four whelping pad. And this is from Easy Whelp, which is a really popular brand and they work really well. So um, the biggest thing whenever the puppies are being born is that it stays nice and dry. You don't want the puppies slipping around. You don't want them to stay so wet because they'll be cold and you really want them to stay warm. So uh, to keep them warm underneath the whelping pad, I have this um, heating pad, which will be right under there. And that is where I'll encourage the puppies to go. The puppies are very instinctual. They'll know to go stay warm. They wanna hop on this thing. Um, the nice thing about a heating pad versus a heat lamp, we've used heat lamps for sure, um, but last time we used a heating pad and we liked it a lot better, and that's because then the mom has a lot easier time being in there maneuvering without getting real hot, because the last thing she wants to do is be super hot. We keep it a little warmer in the house anyways. Um, like normally we have the house set around 70, but when the puppies are here, we try to keep it around 74. Um, and then have a heating pad so that they can go on there and stay warm. We usually just keep it on low and never turn it off. So they can always go find warmth um, because not only is it important for them to stay warm so that they don't freeze to death, but um, it makes it a lot easier for them to digest their food, their milk. Um, and so it's really important. Sure, they can't hear and see when they're first born. However, they can find this. So it's definitely worth it to have that in there. Uh, the other thing too is make sure when you pick a heating pad you don't get one that has like the cover over the plastic because if they get in between and get stuck that might not turn out very good. So it's good to find something that's very safe and the puppies won't get stuck in. Again I'll put these links in the bottom. Um, so that's the whelping box and the whelping pads. I put one on the bottom that way I don't have to change it as frequently, so I only have two of those. Um, but then I have more, like three of these Easy Whelp pads, that way I can change them out a little bit more frequently, and I might order another one. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. When they're first born, it gets really messy, and so I get these um, training pads, you know, the regular pee pads that you find the disposables. And I'll try to put one under, like whenever I see a puppy about to come, I'll throw one under there. That way it can gather the moisture, hopefully, and then I can pitch it and it remains more dry so that these uh, whelping pads, the ones that are not disposable, will stay drier longer. So that's the goal. Drier is better. We want them to stay warm. We want them to stay comfortable and that's a good way to do it. So that's why I have these training pads. I just got those at Walmart. Um, at, when they're being born, it's good to have these little suction bulbs. Uh, I have one for my baby boy who is six months old, but it's also good to have them for the puppies. I've had to use them for most litters that were born. Can't seem to open it, but well, there we go. Um, so these little suction bulbs, real basic. I got them on Amazon, it was a pack of three. Um, but I also get them on Walmart, wherever. It's just whenever I went onto Walmart's um, 
page. They were sold out at my local Walmart. So I was like, whatever, I'll just get on Amazon. So I got those, there's three of those. And this is really good to make sure they don't aspirate. So when they first come out, I take microfiber cloths. I've used paper towels before if you're in a pinch, that works too. But this is just a little bit easier so that you're not going through as many. Um, and I'll take the puppy and kind of wipe them down. Um, the mom generally, if you have an ideal birth, is going to take care of it on her own. But I don't plan on that because it rarely happens perfectly. So I like to be very ready. And if she's not doing it fast enough, I step in. When she licks the puppy, it's stimulating the puppy's organs and everything to kick off. And so I can uh, basically stimulate that with this and get the puppy going. I will suck out the fluids, the birthing fluids from the nostrils. And if it seems like they're having a hard time, sometimes I'll have to stick it down to where their throat is and pull it out, but that's rare. Um, when I say rare, I don't mean like super, super rare. Just like it doesn't happen every litter, but it happens sometimes. Um, so these things are lifesavers. I would not wanna be in a birthing situation without one, just in case. Cause when you need one, you need it now. So, and believe it or not, they're not the easiest things to find sometimes. And sometimes the ones you can find are just way too big or, I don't know. You just want one. You just want it, okay? Trust me. Just trust me. In fact, I have three. Um, let's see here, what else? So the microfiber cloths, like I said, clean it off real good. Try to get it as dry as possible. You can either pitch this if it was way too nasty or you could throw it in a bag or a box, hose them out, and then throw them in your washing machine later. Um, I'll try to do that, but sometimes if a particular birth is just really, really nasty, I'll just toss it. I mean, there were 18 of them for like five bucks. So it's not uh, a terrible price. It's pretty good and so worth it. Yeah, <laughs> totally worth it. Also having this many, um, you can hurry and wipe up a mess if needed. So that's always nice. Um, let's see here. When they are born, oops, knocking stuff everywhere, folks. Um, when they're born, most of the time the mom will cut the cord. A lot of breeders, though, don't trust the mom to do a good job because sometimes the mom can cut it too close and then the puppy ends up with an umbilical hernia. Um, usually not a big deal and it'll go away eventually. Or if it doesn't, they can always fix it when the dog is spayed or neutered. Um, However, it's nice if you can avoid that. Usually when I tell someone, oh, your puppy has an umbilical hernia, they get a little worried. I don't like to worry people. So if I wanna take it the safe route, um, what is this called, a hemostat? Hopefully I said that right. Um, it's basically just a nice clamper and it has a locking system. So when you lock it real tight, it's gonna keep the umbilical cord closed on one end and then I can snip it on the other side and I usually do it like an inch and a half to two inches away from the puppy um, and then generally I take this um, pure unwaxed floss no scent and tie it around the umbilical cord just to ensure that it stays closed there's also umbilical clamps that you can buy some of my uh, mama dogs will that'll bother them and they'll want to get it off. And so I found a little bit better use with the floss just so that I don't have to worry about them ripping it off and then having a bigger mess later or potentially life threatening because they started to bleed too much. So that's definitely worth having on hand. Um, so just make sure you have it. My husband's looking at me, what? I'm talking to myself, okay? Just kidding. talking to the camera and anyone that wants to Okay, so there's that part. And I also like to have the iodine prep pads or alcohol pads just so that I have a way to sterilize things between puppies or I don't know. It's just good to have them on hand. I like to sterilize things just to make sure that everything is nice and fresh and clean. Um, while mom is giving birth, I use the Oral Cal Plus. You, I mean, a lot of people have used, can you guys turn that off? I'm using this right now. Um, the Oral Cow Plus, a lot of people use Tums, or I've heard of people using ice cream or yogurt. 
or whatever else, but this is a really good brand, um, the Breeders Edge, and I use other products from them. But the Oral Cow Plus, I give it to them right when they start labor, and then a little bit between the puppies, um, just to keep everything going along. It helps the mom from getting a little bit neurotic sometimes, or uh, anxious. If your mom is acting, like your mama dog is acting a little wild, and doesn't seem like she's caring very much, a lot of times it is signifying that there's a calcium deficiency. So just to avoid those problems, the Oral Cow Plus is definitely a good option. Um, then I also have Nurture Mate, and this is a support for the immune system with colostrum, antibodies, and B vitamins. If you don't have the mom or she's not producing milk, or even if you just wanna give them a little extra boost, this is worthwhile. Um, there's been, like maybe your mama dog has a C-section and it's just not going as smoothly as you'd like. This is a good quick way to get some antibodies and colostrum with those B vitamins into your puppies right away. So I definitely recommend that. I also use this Benabac Plus and this has a lot of good microorganisms for their gut. And so you give it to them when they're born. It doesn't have to be the second they come out, but there's instructions on here and then you give them uh, every few days and then sometimes, I mean the span gets bigger and bigger, but it's just really good, especially when you're gonna be deworming them. It just puts in those good bacteria into their gut flora and yeah, it's just important. Speaking of warmer, uh, as I'm awaiting the puppies, I'm giving Fembendazole, uh, this brand is Safeguard. Panicare is also very well known. Um, but it's the same thing, and I'm giving the mama, Leah, um, her dewormer every day. I started a couple days ago, and I'll go until two days after the puppies are born, and that's just to help prevent um, parasites getting into the puppies, um, either in the utero or through the best breast milk once they're out and eating. So that's important as well. To administer that, I use little syringes. I got big boxes of these. Um, they're not very expensive. They're so helpful. I also personally, if I have to feed formula, which I don't have on hand, but as black as black, if I have a picture or I'll just put it below. Um, I like to feed with this just because it's a little bit easier for me than the bottles. I also have a new product that I want to try, so before I show it, I want to use it and see how it works, and if it's a success, then I'll show you, um, but I'm hoping it can help. This is just, I'll feed the puppies formula um, if mama isn't producing enough, or there might be some that just need a little extra boost. Sometimes the smaller puppies get pushed off by the bigger, heavier puppies. Um, and so then I, I'll just give them a little top off just to make sure that they're getting plenty. Um, because whenever they're eat, breastfeeding, they all want the, the biggest producing nipples, but not everybody can fit on a few. So that's where I come in. Um, and then I'll also rotate them too. That way they all have a chance on the mama in the back. Sometimes if it's a big litter, I'll rotate. I'll let the small ones have at it first. And then after a few minutes, I'll put the big ones on. They'll usually just shove off the little ones, and the little ones will go find the uh, lesser producing nipples, but it's just how it is. So anyways, I, like, I just like to be prepared so that I have a way to supplement when needed. Um, and that should be arriving in the mail soon. Now, as they're being born, I'll be putting on color-coded collars, and I've used different kind of collars before. Some of them are too big, like the ones for kittens are usually the smallest, but they're just too big. And I've also used, they have Velcro ones where you kind of wrap it around to where it fits them. And that works well, except that they start to lose the stickiness, the Velcro does. Um, and if it's at all too big, they'll get their paw stuck inside and then they're like stuck with only three legs. Um, and it's just sad and it puts too much stress on them. Not worth it. So I was really, um, happy when I found these, which I don't even know what these are called. I don't know, elastic. I think a lot of people use them like for face masks or something like that so that they can put them around their ears. 
um, I guess it, I don't know. Anyways, the idea is you can make it as big as you need to. So this is probably going to be just right. But if it was too big, I could just close it up. Um, and I can just adjust it by moving this little plastic piece up and down. Then once they're a little bit bigger, then I'll get the breakaway collars that you'd use on a kitten or the ones for little puppies. And those are sufficient. I'll just have to make sure that I find ones that are similar in color. Um, but this has a whole bunch. So this lasts for a lot of litters. I've never had to get multiple of those. Uh, let's see, so what else? One thing I like to do is have these uh, latex gloves so that when I'm doing stuff, if, I don't know, well, let's just be honest. Sometimes I don't want to get all the nasty stuff on my hands, especially when I have my baby, because if my baby needs me and I'm between birds, I can just rip it off. Maybe do a quick rinse and go help the baby or whatever else I need to do. And so having these um, plastic gloves are really good. And I make sure I get the fitted ones, not the really loose ones. That way I can uh, work on an umbilical cord or whatever I need to do and not have to worry about it falling off. So those are really important to have on hand. Also, it does help keep things a little bit sterile, especially if something happens really fast and you don't have time to go wash your hands before helping the puppies. So all around, it's a good idea to have some gloves on hand. When they're born, whoa. I have this scale, you can just put this right in there, and you can weigh them uh, with pounds, kilograms. Did I say that right? <laughs> I don't even know, I'm confusing myself. Um, but you can weigh them in here. I also use this to weigh my baby, so that's kind of fun. Um, but it's dual purpose, so you can weigh babies, animals, whatever, but it's definitely a good tool to have. On my clipboard, I still need to print out my pages, but I'll have a printout so that I can write which puppy, and I'll identify by collar. So, red collar was born at, I don't know, 1 p.m. I hope, I hope it's not a middle of the night birth. We'll see. Anyways, I'll write down what time they were born, male or female, um, if there were in, was anything noteworthy that needs to be written down and just take note of it, take their weight, and then track their weight and make sure that they're gaining weight so that I don't have to worry about um, their digestion and making sure that they're getting all the nutrients they need. It's just an easy way to check and make sure that all is well. Uh, oh, the Oxymama, this is also by Breeders Edge, and this is really good. I love giving it. I've had great milk supply success ever since I started using this, like five liters ago. Um, it's a postnatal vitamin, and just like for me and my kids, I've taken, I call them milk pills, but um, what do I even use? What is it called? Mother's Love? More Milk Plus, that's what it is. For myself, I use Mother's Milk, uh, More Milk Plus. But for the dogs, I give them this and it's just an extra little treat that they like. Uh, and, oh, the last thing I didn't mention was masking tape. This is just to help keep the whelping pads in place. Otherwise, she moves them all around when she gets in and out. Uh, not that this can't be taken off by her. If she really goes for it, she can still move the whelping pads. But if she's just doing regular movements, then this will hold it down and it'll keep it a lot easier. Um, to keep the floor clean and to make sure that they have that padding underneath them because again You don't want them in a cold slippery spot having them on a whelping pad is going to help keep everything drier and just better in general for the puppies So I'm going to put all this stuff into my little uh, puppy cart and During whelping I have all my whelping stuff and then when whelping is over I'll transition and put all the stuff that I use on a daily basis but for today's purposes, I'm going to get all this stuff in there. So I guess that's why I go check it out. And anything that you are interested in, you can find in the link below. And if I forget, feel free to comment or message me. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much getting ready. I'm sure I forgot something, but that's just life, right? Especially when you have uh, a baby. He keeps me going and I just forget things all the time. So that's fine. But for the most part, I'm pretty prepared. I just need to print out 
Uh, these, of course, get a pen and put it inside. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. And then hopefully I'll remember and uh, vlog the rest of the steps so that you can see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna go put this thing together. <laughs> is I need to get the S black that's coming in the mail this week and I'll throw it in my cart um, and uh, other than that here's the Leah. Hi Leah. Look at a Leah girl. Leah girl. Very nice. <laughs> Let's see. I'll be nice and gentle. Good job. See that belly? Where are the puppies? Um, uh, Where? Very cool, huh? I think they should be coming in real nice and soon. Look, she has nipples right there. Gonna be working real good. Hey, okay, good girl. So we will just be here awaiting the arrival of these puppies. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me as we get ready for the whelping. And I look forward to talking to you next. Have a good day.